Frutiger Arrow. Am I right? The Frutiger Arrow aesthetic. It features glossy design, skeuomorphic elements, lots of transparency and refraction. It looks clean and fresh. It's associated with jungle music. Many find this aesthetic very nostalgic as it reminds certain people of times of higher simplicity, times of increased calm as opposed to the chaos of the modern day. It's quite a famous aesthetic, one that I've decided to explore in this video. Also known as Web 2.0 Gloss, it's, um, it's an aesthetic, a design language that can be quite firmly put into a box and labeled as its own thing. It has a very distinct feel to it, which makes it nice because uh, when you want to create something that has that specific aesthetic, you kind of know what you're looking for. Not saying it's easy to mimic, but you know Frutiger Arrow when you see it. The Arrow design language, it was um, very ephemeral. It was something to be experienced by a specific generation, a very specific period of time where companies were trying to um, come up with the future of um, UI design. And I think it goes way past UI design even. It's, it's a feeling. People often refer to Frutiger Arrow as the future we were promised. Partly because most people um, view the past with rose-tinted glasses, and also partly because Frutiger Arrow is a very optimistic aesthetic. It's optimistic in that there's lots of bright colors, it's very clean, and it promises a very friendly and happy future. I think designers of UIs and games are probably going for that as well, because it would make the user feel very welcomed to uh, the application, thus giving it this very friendly look. It's what makes it distinct from modern UI design. It's not just about conveying information, it's about what feeling the UI actually gives you. Lots of icons that are supposed to mimic their physical um, counterparts, IRL. Unlike Metro, you don't find just a box with text inside of it describing what the um, element is supposed to be. No, you have an icon and it has a very distinct design. And with that in mind, I wanted to make an um, operating system desktop environment that mimics Frutiger Arrow. Not just plainly copy uh, Windows 7, but kind of have a new take on it. I wanted to create a Linux Rice that utilizes Frutiger Arrow as the design language, which can be applied in a modern setting still, something that you can actually use. Definitely a difficult and strenuous task for the dinky, but it can be done and it will be done, as I'm about to uh, demonstrate. And of course, I want to use a tiling window manager as opposed to a complete desktop environment. That way we can design everything ourselves. Hyperland, because it's very customizable, has the most effects. You can probably replicate everything with sway or sway effects as well. The first thing that I wanted to create is the taskbar. The taskbar is probably one of the most eye-catching components of a desktop environment, so it was important to get it right. I also around this time wanted to create a design system, a design language, something that followed the Frutiger Aero aesthetic, but not blatantly copy Windows 7 or Windows Vista, for example. For the taskbar, I've decided to use Waybar. It has the most features and it's also very customizable. It uses a CSS-like language to customize the look. You can get it to look essentially however you want it to look. After iterating a bunch, I've uh, arrived at two distinct designs, one that's translucent and one that's opaque. I'm going to create a lot of alternate versions of this rice, one that is translucent and one that's opaque. I also made sure to write every config file in a way that's easily customizable in case any of you wanted to experiment with this rice. More on that later. In most operating systems to launch an application, you would use either icons that exist on the desktop or an application launcher, such as the start menu on Windows. Here, since we use tiling window managers, we use a thing called a D menu, which is essentially an application launcher. For this, I've decided to use Wofi. Much like Waybar, it's highly customizable and uses essentially the same kind of CSS-like language to um, customize the design. A few hours or 
minutes of iterating and two designs were reached, one that's translucent and one that's opaque. I've tried to make them in a way that matches the um, already established design language. They should fit right in with the system. Although with Frutiger Arrow, it's genuinely a quite forgiving design aesthetic. As long as you follow the broader aesthetic, you shouldn't get too many conflicting designs. I made sure to customize the Hyperland um, config files in order to give a blur to certain applications and as well give things that uh, acrylic glassy look. It adds a lot of depth to the operating system and definitely does um, look very Frutiger Arrow-like. GTK is a UI toolkit. It's a framework used by many applications, including Linux-based applications. GTK is themable. There is a system-wide GTK theme that all of the GTK-based applications will use. These range from file explorers to context menus and pop-ups. So it was important to create a GTK theme that matches the overall system. I forked an existing theme that I thought matched the design language very well and I customized it. You can see the difference in uh, how the file explorer looks. This kind of design is also reflected in, uh, let's say, context menus or pop-ups that various different applications might generate. They fit in with the design, which is important. After getting a placeholder wallpaper, you can see the entire design slowly starting to fit in. Widgets are very, very good components to an operating system because you can design every widget independently and there's a lot of opportunities for you to reflect a specific design language with widgets. Windows Vista, for example, pioneered widgets in an operating system, and I wanted to create widgets. There's a UI framework called EO. It essentially lets you create widgets. You could even create an entire taskbar with EO, but I decided to use Waybar since it's simply the right tool for the job. I iterated and iterated on lots of different designs and made a couple widgets that uh, reflected the design language. It really makes the desktop look a lot more inviting. It really adds a lot to the system. Frutiger Arrow is a design language. There was no self-awareness at the time. It was just the industry standard. It was the corporate design language of the time. That being said, a lot of things had Frutiger Arrow elements embedded within even games such as Mirror's Edge or Spore. I feel like Frutiger Arrow was probably the design language where eccentricity peaked. After that, design languages uh, started to become more dull and focus less on the design elements and more on information. For example, Metro, a very stark departure from Frutiger Arrow. Metro being a more self-aware design language, I mean, that's what Microsoft named them, whilst Frutiger Arrow wasn't, wasn't as self-aware. Arrow saw its demise around 2012, 2013. This shift happened quite instantly, and I think it's probably because companies thought if they still use the older design languages, they would be left behind. They would be seen as outdated, and, well, that's not good. Wallpapers are, of course, a very personal thing. You set a wallpaper that reflects your entire style. But with a desktop like this, they really look good with a specific kind of wallpaper, if you know what I mean. So I spent quite a long time creating a bunch of different wallpapers. In the end, I think it went well. I tried to make them scream um, Frutiger Arrow as much as possible. And speaking of the future that we were promised, I tried to make them evoke that exact feeling. A very optimistic design, very bright, very green, aquarium-like. I think they add a lot to the system, as you can see. There's also plenty of third-party applications that are themable, such as Spotify or Discord. It's important that when you get the opportunity to theme a custom third-party application, that you do it. These are some of the final touches do you think it looks acceptable? Personally, I think it looks quite acceptable. I approved this design and made an entire project, copied all the config files and published them to GitHub. Anyone can use this rice. 
including the wallpapers, and you can also customize them. I commented everything very heavily in the uh, config files. It should make it easy to know what is what. This design, it's Frutiger Arrow, but it maintains some of the necessary minimalism of using a tiling window manager. It's not as bloated as a full-on desktop environment. I like this system. I think I'm going to keep iterating on it and probably use it for a while.